started at Kaspersky Lab 18 years ago and uh, for all this time I've been uh, doing different uh, roles. I've been heading research for uh, EMEA region and now I'm the uh, head of the global research and analysis team, focusing mostly on APT attacks, critical infrastructure hacks, uh, big financial threats. Uh, overall I started with computers about 24, 25 years ago. Um, my first computer was a Spectrum clone and from there I moved on, I got a 286, uh, 486 and so on. I think that in order to be a good manager of, uh, in a technical company, you need to be hands-on. I think the best uh, managers always have some technical uh, background. And you need to be, let's say, in touch with uh, what's happening right now in order to be able to understand, let's say, the bigger picture. So if we want to develop some new technologies to protect our users, you need to know what's going on, basically. So I try to do a lot of uh, coding. I still do a lot of coding every day, a bit of uh, scripting, um, big data, SQL, these kind of things. I, I show our latest toy, which is our code similarity system called the YANA. And this system allows us to pretty much find a needle in the haystack. When we have a new targeted attack, so very sophisticated attacks, this system allows us to say, is this uh, similar to any other attack we have seen before, or is it a completely, completely a new one? Uh, it helps a lot to understand uh, who is attacking you, for what reason, what you need to do in order to protect yourself, and so on. Sometimes uh, when we look at these attacks, we uh, were never able to say exactly uh, who was behind it. So, like uh, many of these are huge mysteries uh, that, let's say, were never solved. For instance, uh, we have a famous case, we called it Wild Neutron, and these uh, hackers behind Wild Neutron, they succeeded in hacking Microsoft, Apple, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, and nobody was ever able to find who they were because they were like so good at uh, both technical and hiding. All it takes is just one mistake and that will, in today's world, it will remain forever on the internet. If you use a VPN, for instance, and the VPN fails for five seconds, that's all it takes. Or if you use Tor, let's say in some of these attacks, um, if uh, Tor fails and you connect by bypassing the Tor proxy, you, you will leave a trace which we can find in order to, to catch those attacks. Nowadays, uh, there's not only less and less mistakes, but we see uh, uh, so-called false flags which are planted on purpose, meaning some hackers, they want to, uh, you to believe that they are from a different place. One uh, famous example is the uh, Lazarus group, which after the uh, NSA accused them of being North Korean hackers, they started planting uh, Russian keywords in their malware. Uh, but the way they were doing it, for instance, they put the uh, word Chinik in there. You can never be 100% sure, and uh, you know, like in technical terms, you can never have 100% protection, and you can uh, never be 100% sure about an attack. Even, uh, I would say, we can be tricked. So, we've seen an attack in 2014 uh, when a uh, hacker group uh, used a command and control server to launch an attack. And what happened is that a different group, they saw this group uh, doing it and they hacked into the same server and they used it uh, just as in order to try to look like it's the same. So actually we were quite fooled by this and we believe that it's actually the same. It took us uh, maybe let's say two, three years until we understood that it was a different, uh, completely different groups with a different interest. There's also uh, the cases which uh, are most interesting and we've seen this by the way, uh, when the hackers just use open source tools and they, uh, let's say, uh, leak the source code of their tools so that others use it. So then it's like a complete mess and you don't know anymore who is who and what's going on. In some cases, even if they don't know, they have a style. Someone like me or other researchers, they can see the style. And uh, for instance, it can be uh, seen in things such as operational security, that they like to use uh, this particular VPN service, which, to be honest, uh, is extremely rare. Nobody else uses this VPN, but they like it because, let's say, they're very familiar with it. Or they like a particular hosting company, or 
In some cases, uh, they pay for uh, hosting using the same Bitcoin wallet. And then you can see the wallet and you recognize that it's uh, the same. Uh, of course, uh, this can be improved, like they can uh, switch between different VPNs, they can use uh, Monero or Zcash or other untraceable cryptocurrencies. But I think that in many cases, uh, they don't really realize uh, of the uh, this operational security uh, things. Even when they realize, you can still define some uh, so-called tools, techniques and procedures, which uh, means how they usually operate like first uh, let's say they uh, exploit an SQL injection in a website then they drop a web shell from the web shell they put mimic ads and from there they start moving laterally so you know that this is a style of a certain group